What up, you two? This your boy Danny checking back in on you. I know I haven't been doing a lot of videos. This whole little thing is kind of new for me. And I'm not necessarily camera. Uh, I'm not necessarily photogenic, I guess you could say. But I see where there's a little little problem on YouTube with uh, LaShawn. I think his name is Sparks or Parks or something like that. Uh, with uh, old boy still hauling out there in um, California. See, there's a little problem going on up in the mist. <laughs> I think it's funny myself. And the reason I think it's funny is because none of those guys make the other guy money. That's why I think it's funny. I also think it's funny because a lot of guys be on YouTube talking about this, what they got going on. Or they talking about this company or they talking about that company. And I agree with I agree with uh old boy uh still hauling out of Cali. They didn't do their research. Totally. They didn't do their research. They wasn't aware of what they were jumping into. The other part about that is everybody that's a they have any kind of affiliation with truck drivers to a certain degree know that truck drivers talk a lot of shit. They talk a lot of shit. And a lot of times, they talk a lot of shit on shit they done half-ass did, motherfucking... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Doing too much cussing. They talk a lot of shit about a lot of things that they done did, have research on. Or they did research on based on enough of just for one truck. Or they drove for a company that was a lease operation company, such as Prime or a lot of the other companies. But, but they fail to realize there's a lot of things in the paperwork that they do not do. A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff they do not do because Prime are already taking care of it. Or whatever company it may be. They're already taking care of a lot of stuff. Now, myself personally, I feel like if you leased onto a company to a certain degree, if you don't have that get up and go about yourself where you get up and you find your load, you get up, you negotiate your load, you make sure everything is right so that you can have a you can maximize the most income income possibility possible. There's a lot of drivers that don't do that. And I'm going to use this simple comparison. There's a lot of drivers that know how to bag up pretty, pretty good. But when they got a moment and they sit in the truck side waiting on a load or waiting on something or, or whatever, they're not, standing, they're not sitting there practicing bagging up. So when they get to a dock, there you go. That's the driver that's taking a while to get in the dock. That's the driver that's holding everybody up in the truck stop trying to pass through and they trying to bag up in a, in a um, parking spot. So all those things turn the spot. Sorry about that guy had a truck passing by. So all those things transpire. But what's important to know is this. In the world of business, whenever you're going to invite or ask someone to partner with you to do anything, whether it's to build funds, whether it's their credit, or whether it's their, um, their knowledge, their know-how, or whether it's their customer base, you must come to the table to fulfill your side. Now, from my understanding a little bit with what uh, the whole problem was, <laughs> from my understanding, is that a man made an investment with another man. The investment was supposed to pay off something to the man making the investment. However that went, it didn't go exactly to form. So it never took shape. So somebody got upset. Another person got upset. And then another person got upset. Then some fingers got pointed. Basically in a nutshell. Now, for the man that invested the 10 grand, if I'm you, I invest that money in myself. If I'm you. Because nobody going to do what you do for your money such as you would do for your own money. Now, granted, you could take that money and put it with, like, an agency. Whether you're going to go stocks, mutual bonds, things like that. And let that money grow. And honestly, the sure bit would be do that. Would, would be that. To invest it into the market somehow. And let that money grow. And let that money be that way. Now, the other part of it is the way that he took. One of the other ways is the way that he took, which is he knew someone that had something going that he thought was going to work out well, but it didn't. We live and we learn, people. Point fingers don't solve anything. 
Nothing. If anything, it makes things worse. No. I'm sure somebody out there saying, who is you? Why are you coming on this? Because I've come pretty much like in the same situation like... Um, kind of like a situation of like LaShawn and and with um, my man out of Cali. The reason why is because I'm least to great wide. And the reason why I'm least to great wide is because I like the freight base. But upon least to great wide, I don't have nobody other than the Qualcomm telling me what I'm supposed to be doing. Point blank facts. Now, I know there's some other drivers out there that are going to say, oh, great wide this, great wide that. I'm a testament to it, yo. I done been great wide three years. Although she dirty, this is my truck. It say great wide right there, at least two. You see that. But this is not a prime truck. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This, this, it ain't nothing like that. Ain't nothing like that. We book our own freight. We negotiate our own rates. All that type of stuff. Great wide just give us the base of baby to have to keep us. I'm gonna tell you and put it to you this way. This is what great wide do. They give us this. <laughs> that DLT number. <laughs> that MC number. With that, you book whoever freight you want to book. Now, granted, there's a couple brokers out there they don't like us to book with. Cause reason why? It's because their credit rate, their credit score. Reason why? That, and also because sometimes some other contractors got screwed over because they didn't pay them out or some shit like that, whatever. But for the most part, if there's 300 brokers out there that you can work with, out of that 300, 250 of them you can work with. It ain't that many brokers that uh, great wide has a band on or don't affiliate with point blank period point blank period whether it's snyder freight what is swift freight whether what is coyote what is uh i'm gonna say total but they got some of the cheapest prices on the market always so i don't suggest working with them at all now some people say they get good prices to me can you really count that's what i ask those contractors can you really count and the reason why I say that is because it hasn't been too long ago. I ran a load uh, that was the same load from the same dis uh, distribution center. Total had the load. Coyote had the load. Check this out. The load paid $800 more on Coyote's side. I'm going to put it to you that way. The load was going 500 miles. And, of course, Total was like, oh, we could do 450 What the fuck? <laughs> Coyote came in off the bat at 12 off the bat so what are you negotiating really and truly what what are you negotiating you go are you negotiating for 1300 on 500 1300 on 500 miles and then it was an open delivery you could deliver that day or you could deliver the following day before 8 p.m really that's love 500 miles you could deliver that day or you could deliver the next day before 8 p.m open delivery so you you get that knock that out in a day on top of knocking that out in a day upon getting that where do you get that since you got time for you go pick it up you gonna book you another load right quick you know what i'm saying so the turnaround in that two day time span in two days now i'm 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 i'm, I'm, help, I'm gonna give y'all some numbers right quick to help y'all out to show y'all the difference in maybe what y'all doing compared to what oh boy the Cali was talking about as opposed to what I'm talking about as opposed to how a lot of how a lot of it go. A lot of people that's lease owner companies, they giving this big ass number. Now when when now you have to think about what's coming out of that number. Cause that number may not actually be that big. If it's refrigerated freight, do the company pay for your fuel or do you pay for your fuel? question the other part of it about is upon paying for the fuel for the reefer what temperature that reefer need to be set at are you going to wind up getting are you going to wind up getting more fuel to make sure that temperature stays set the way it need to be set so that that so that that uh 
that motor can run to keep everything cool. You got that expense. You got your regular fuel expense. You got your death expense. Then on top of that, you got to pay yourself out of that. Then also, you got to really see what the bottom number is. What the bottom number is to you. Because you still have to pay tax on that money. So all these things are factors. 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 So like for me, a load that's... So we use that same load I just was talking about. That load pays twelve hundred dollars on five hundred miles. If that's a reefer load, I want that load to pay thirteen fifty. Point blank, period. Really and truly, I want that load to pay fourteen fifty. Reason, really and truly. Reason why? Because reefer drivers always get stuck unloading and loading. It's always some extra stuff they got to do. Such so as they got to break it down, they got to repalletize it, they got to separate it, all that type of stuff. So you may a load that may literally take two hours to unload. You may be there five, six hours because they don't got the stuff off the trailer, but they're doing a whole bunch of extra stuff. You're losing money because you're sitting your ass in the dock. That's why I don't do reefers. Now, someone else going to say, oh, but I take a load with a reefer that's going from Louisiana to West Wisconsin, and that load will pay me $2,500. You're a motherfucking lie. I'm going to put it out there to you like that. You're a lie. You're a lie. The load is not going to pay you $2,500 coming from the south going up north. Now, it's possible to do that coming from north down south, especially if you're going to like into Florida. But from like Louisiana to, to Wisconsin, they're not paying you $2,500 on a gross. They're not going to do that. At the most, from a reefer trailer load, and, the, and also this depends on when the prices spike up. But on a flat line average level, they're going to offer you some shit like, from from Louisiana to Wisconsin, and we'll we'll go we'll go just right in, just cross right over to Wisconsin. Let's say it's going to Beloit, Wisconsin. Okay, Beloit, Wisconsin is just right when you cross over out of Louis out of L. Out, I'm sorry, out of uh, Illinois into Wisconsin. So give or take, that's like a 800. No, nah, I'm gonna stretch it out. That's about a 985, about 978, 980 mile run. They're not paying you $2,500 on a gross for that. It's not going to happen. It is not going to happen. The only way it's going to happen is that that is some freight, that is a rush, somebody messed up somewhere, and they just got to get it there. That's the only way. And my, nine times out of ten, they'll cook, a lot of times they'll go around the big companies or they'll go around the companies such as like the Swifts, uh, the Warners, or whatever. They'll go around them and they'll go to somebody like um, like an expedited shipper. And it may be a team truck. Because that stuff done been held up for whatever reason. And they trying to get that shit there in a day. Now they're going to up the price. and But only to a certain degree because they already had a price already set. And for some reason something went wrong so it didn't happen. So guys, when, you, when people are telling y'all stuff about trucking. Use your head for a moment. If it don't rationally makes sense question it question it and the other thing i'll say if can nobody work your money better than you work your money and if you had the information then let someone else work your money okay cool because you know what you need to be looking for you know what you need to watch out against you know what's supposed to be going on you know how the market moving blah 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 but in the bottom line of all of it can nobody work your money the way you work your money and then the other thing about this just as Go says, a lot of YouTube truckers, it's like they ain't home for fame or whatever. It's just YouTube, guys. That's all it is, just YouTube. Maybe you like looking at yourself. I don't know. I kind of like looking at myself, too. But I know this. YouTube is not what butters my bread. It's not. I enjoy getting on here. And I tell you how much I enjoy getting on here. I probably done made maybe five videos the whole time that, I, that I've been dealing with YouTube. So I don't know about the monetization, the monetization of your of your ta of your cha of your channel. I don't know about selling T-shirts, hats, all that type of stuff. Cause my thing is, if that's what you want to do, then why you in trucking? If you want to sell T-shirts, hats, stickers, backpacks, you want to brand yourself, then why you in trucking? And if you are in trucking, and you want to brand yourself like that, is this your stepping stone maybe to another truck, to another truck? Because there's been plenty of people on YouTube that talk about getting this truck, leasing that truck, doing this and that, blah, 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 blah. And honestly, 
I'm gonna be honest with you. A lot of things that they post on YouTube. Now I understand that, that being transparent. I understand being transparent on the fact of they trying to maybe they trying to put out there like they don't know everything, so things happen. But I'm gonna tell you this right here. I have seen things on YouTube. With drivers that has been driving, I know at least two to three years because I've been seeing their videos on YouTube at least two to three years, and they having freaking blowouts. Okay, let me make that a little bit more simpler. They having blowouts on tires that they know that they should not be riding another two or three hundred miles on. So, do you really want to take that person' advice? That's my question. Literally, you think about this. Someone's on YouTube been driving for at least three plus years, three plus years. They go to get a trailer, hook up to the trailer, do the walk around on the trailer, see that the tra see that the trailer needs a tire. But instead of stopping, instead of notifying their company, say, hey, look, the trailer y'all got that y'all want me to pull got a bad tire on it. So, look, I need to know where you want me to take this to get this tire fixed. Or, better yet, don't move the trailer, call the company, have them send a uh, tire uh, repair uh, guy out there to fix the trailer, the tire right there on the spot. No, that's too much. What did the person do? The person hooked to the trailer, called himself doing a pre-trip, so therefore, nine times out of ten, they lied on their pre-trip. Straight out lied. Okay, here we go. Couple miles on down the road, I say couple, but I'm a I'm a grant them 200 miles on down the road. I'm a grant them that for, because the person said in the video, guys, I didn't make it that far, had a freaking blowout. Why, idiot? And I mean idiot. I I, I really mean to say that because you didn't do the proper things needed in order to make sure that that trailer was ready to go. You started it, but you didn't complete it. How you didn't complete it? Because you went on a ride instead of getting that tire fixed. So now you got a blowout. So now what they're going to do, it costs you more time. So, my man out there in Cali, we're still hauling. Uh, LaShawn, I think his name is Sparks. Might be Parks. Uh, Trucker Brown. A lot of these guys. I be listening to a lot of these guys' videos. And uh, I must say, I feel like the person that's giving the best accurate information is my man out there in Cali um, that, that got the company still hauling. I think his name Los. I might be wrong. I think his name Los. I would say if anybody going to listen to anybody's com if any of you all going to listen to anyone's uh, videos, he would be the guy to listen to. That's what I would say. Based off my experience, my time in the industry, and I've been doing it for 21 years. 21. And in 21 of them years, three of them years I took off because I got a degree in psychology and social work. I got a double major in college. So I didn't want my mom to feel like she totally wasted her money. So I went and did that for a little while before I came back into the trucking industry. But upon coming back in the trucking industry, I knew I wanted two trucks. One I operate, another one I'm going to get here. Like, 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 like old boy said, bumped my head a couple times. And the reason why I bumped my head a couple times, because I was listening to other freaking people. That's why. I hear their idea and try to mix it with my idea. But that wasn't really why I should be. I should just stuck to my own guns and did what I know what to do. And once I did that, things changed. Why well, I mean changed? I went from getting regular ass paycheck like I'm a freaking company driver to really seeing some money in my paychecks. You know what I'm saying? So therefore, so so the point of this is that just because something worked for someone else or it seemed like it worked for someone else, doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna work for you. The other part of it is if you got money to invest in this in, into the transportation industry, bet on yourself. Do that. Bet on yourself. Because nothing about these trucks is cheap. Not from a tire to a fucking change your brake pads to even just your fifth wheel. Hell, the little greasy packages for the fifth wheel are two ninety nine. So think about it. By the time you bought three of those joints, you already at ten dollars. And mind you, three of them won't cover your fifth wheel. 
So nothing is cheap with trucking. Nothing. So if you think you're going to get in here and trucking and be able to kind of like grind on a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And granted, some truckers do, but grant this also. They have a, they bump their head more times than not than what they should because they doing it trying to skip, skip, skip steps, skipping steps. So look, I'll say this again. Bet on yourself with your money. Truck Brown, LaShawn, uh, LaShawn, LaShawn, however you say his name, I don't mean no disrespect. These guys may have some good things going for just them. But do that work for you. <laughs> Think about it that way. It may work for them, but do that work for you. And then the only thing, are you or do you want to be do you want to be a, a owner operator? Or do you want to be an owner operator slash t-shirt salesman slash uh in uh journalist? <laughs> What I mean, what is you really trying to do? <laughs> are you are you trucking? Are you a trucker and a, a small business owner that's been a trucker? Or are you um or, or are you a t-shirt salesman? Are you a backpack salesman? <laughs> what are you? <laughs> really and truly, what are you? And then I'm gonna tell you something else, guys. You guys be watching these people videos. And they be doing these interviews with other people or whatever they doing or what have you. And and these other people are like making major moves, power moves, so to speak. You know, they may have four, five, eight, nine, ten trucks or whatever. May have another ten trailers. But the person that's giving the interview is still leasing a truck. They got all these views, all these followers. Whether it's YouTube, Instagram, whatever, whatever, whatever. So, my question is, what are you? And I don't mean that disrespectfully. I, if you're a trucker, wanna be? If if you're a trucker that's looking for, uh, and you saying you are, uh, what they call that, a freelance entrepreneur? Okay, cool. I got you. I can rock with that. I can rock with that. But if you want to be a trucker and, and serious about the trucking business, then I don't understand why you're doing all the other stuff. Because if you go to Prime, you go to Swift, CR England, uh, 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 Warner. <laughs> I'm just naming companies. That's all I'm doing. You go in these companies, their business is trucking. The business is not selling T-shirts. Their business is not uh, selling baseball caps. Their business is trucking. That's what it is. Because think about this. They will, even by coming on to their company, they normally are going to give you like one hat, a keychain, a pin, and a t-shirt. If you get the t-shirt. Nine times out of ten, they got a little company store that you have to go buy that shit if you want that. Because their main business is trucking. Not branding and selling t-shirts and hats and so forth with their name on it or their company name on it. So, my thing is, guys, look at these type of things. And, I, and I'm going to say this again. I'm not trying to throw shade at anybody. Why well, take that back? I am throwing shade to a certain degree. I'm throwing shade at the person and at the people who's following these guys. And they're not taking time out to be transparent with themselves. As in, do that really make sense? Can I really do that? What's what effort and what fortitude did I have in myself to say I can do that? Why would I take my money and give you my money when I'm capable of doing the same thing? Question these things. Question. Because see, when you pass your money on to somebody else, all you guys, they were, and hopefully you got a contract with them, and maybe in that contract you got some stipulations, some penalties if things don't go right. But if that's the situation and things don't go right, then why go through all that based off of what somebody else said as opposed to you putting your own effort and work and know-how and learning yourself to how to do it? Sometimes the easy way out is not the best way because things will come back on you. So I just look at it like that. 
I want to thank everybody for tuning in. And I'm, I promise you guys, I'm going to try to do more video because I got a lot of I got a lot of knowledge up here. And I'd rather share it with you guys than to get you trying to come on board with me or all that type of stuff. Because I don't want all of that. I, I don't want you in my business and I don't want to put my business out there for you. But what I do want to do is I do want to conversate. I do want to pass ideas off. I do want to be around some minds that think alike. I would like to have those conversations. But I'm not yawning for them. I'm not a crackhead. I'm not yawning to have a conversation to see if to find out in the end that you think you're doing better than me or I think I'm doing better. Fuck all of that. It's, it's not even that serious with me. Because as long as I can take care of my family, and as long as I keep this bad boy running, we good. Well, let me say that back. As long as I can keep this bad boy running and keep it up to specs the way it's supposed to be, and feed my family, the rest of it can just roll on down the river. But that's all that matter. That's all that matter. So I'm going to wish everybody good. Get this video getting kind of long. I didn't anticipate for it to be so long. But, uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, guys, click, subscribe. Let's have some conversations. Let's have some convos. And let's see, what, see what's going on. See what's going on. But, yeah, though, y'all have a good day. I'm going to wish all y'all a safe, peaceful day. Love, prosperity. Be easy, people. Treat each other the way you want to be treated. Peace.